What's up guys, so I finally did it. I finally bought one of these. The GoPro Max. So let's put it to the test. I'm gonna see what, what this thing can do. My first 360 camera. But you gotta focus. Oh, oh there it is. All right, I gotta charge this thing up because uh, I should remember, oh, like this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's see what else we got here. We got some instructions. Uh, uh, what? What is that? Has like this bag for it, but it has like lumps in the bag. There's lumps in here. I don't know what that's about. Maybe it's these are like lens covers or something. Does that go on there? Oh yeah, look at that, lens covers. All right guys, so I got this thing all hooked up to my phone right here. Um, I'm gonna take it with me. I'm gonna test it out, test out some features, and we're gonna see, we're gonna see what the Max is all about. My first 360 cam, I'm stoked. I'm so stoked, this is gonna be great. Whew. What's up, home slice? Lucas here. So, the GoPro Max. My initial thoughts, my review. What do I think for the average guy, all right? I'm gonna give you like the average guy review. But for real, me, right out of the box, don't even read the instructions, just like, how does it work? What do I think? The basic features, um, I'm gonna get into it. First, the things I like. First things first, right out of the box, it's very simple. On the side here, you have a little latch, you pull this down. You flip it out, you can put the battery in right in there, you can put your SD card in there. There's no internal memory, so you have to put that SD card in there. You have to get a micro SD card and put it in there. There's also a spot you can charge this thing, or uh, I believe hook it up to like the webcam, or maybe it does the webcam with Bluetooth. I don't know, I don't really care. I'm not gonna use the webcam. I think that's, I don't, I don't chat with nobody. Once it's all, you know, charged up or whatever, close this, push it up, close, put, push that little thing up. Then on the side here, power button, hold that for two seconds or one second or whatever, it turns right on. Screen makes it super easy, so much easier than my old GoPro 4, right? This is the last GoPro I had. Yeah, Hero 4, that's what I'm upgrading from. So I'm coming a long ways. <laughs> Standard mode it should be in is that 1080p 60 frames a second. So this is like full HD at 60 frames a second. And this is only action camera modes. That's basically just using one camera. Now you can flip between the two cameras in the lower right hand corner right here with this little whoop de doo thing, all right? So that flips the uh, rear camera or the front camera. Just, you know, you click on it. You can see on the screen. If you wanna change the angle of the lens, you click that little M over on the left side there and you can go um, all the way from max super view, which is really wide, all the way to narrow. And then there's two steps in between. But honestly, I like the max super view or just the, the basic wide. Another thing awesome about the action camera mode is it's extremely stable. Like, holy moly, when I was walking with this thing, the stabilization, that technology, that tech is just so nuts. Like that stabilization was just, it's honestly pretty mind blowing. I was, I was like, wow, this thing's stable. <laughs> you stable, yeah. However, I was kind of like, oh, that's cool, but I don't care. I was really buying this camera for the 360 video. 
To get to the 360 video, lower left hand corner right here, you just click that little camera icon, turns into a globe. All right, that globe means you're in 360 video mode. Now the standard 360 video on this is 5.6K at 30 frames a second, spherical video, spherical video. That's the kicker there. I'm gonna get into that in just a second. If you want 60 frames a second, you're gonna have to click on that in the middle, go to the little thing there, click on that thing, and then you can go to 60, but it drops the quality down to 3K, 60 frames a second. Now, when you're viewing on the viewfinder here in 360 mode, you know, you can only use one camera's view, so you can either view like towards yourself, or you click that thing, and you can view away from you. All right, it doesn't view, the, the screen on here doesn't view in 360 mode, but you're filming in 360 mode, as long as it says 360 mode. Now, viewing this on your phone, when you sync it up to the GoPro app on your phone, it is so trippy and awesome at the same time. Like it's one of the coolest things ever to be able to go on your phone in 360 mode on here and live on your phone, zoom in, twirl the footage around. You can see anywhere you wanna go, focus in on a spot, zoom back in, zoom out, do anything you want on your phone live while it's going with this camera. I think that's one of the coolest parts to the app. Also, you can take the phone and like move around and it moves. Not that the camera doesn't physically move, but the, the, the view of the camera moves because it's filming in full 360. That, that was just one of the coolest parts of this whole thing. Another thing I found awesome about 360 mode is how this thing locks onto the world. So if I go like this, you know, like I did on the trampoline and how I did with a lot of things is it doesn't like, like the footage doesn't like tumble and roll. It stays locked in. It knows where it is in space, so it keeps that footage locked in. So that's how it stays so stable, you know what I mean? And then you have control over where you wanna go in post or while you're viewing it. Now, something else really cool here, I bought this separately, but this stick, right? You know, cause you gotta have one of these sticks. All the kids have them. All the kids on the snowboards have, have these sticks. Seriously though, like in the winter, I remember seeing a lot of these. But yeah, this little stick right here, it's just awesome. It's, it's by GoPro, uh, I forgot what it's called, but you just twist it like that. You can change it to any height you want, twist it back in. That just makes it great for doing that 360 footage. But huge reason I bought this is because it also does this too. Check this out, just pops apart, becomes a camera stand. So that's just super awesome, yeah, right? Makes it very easy. And like the software, how this thing works is it kind of tries to delete the stick if you hold it with your hand, it makes your hand look weird, but whatever, was expecting that. So those are the things I like. It's super awesome, super straightforward. Um, the, the ability to control the footage and just like see it is super cool. Now I'm gonna get to the things that uh, I don't really like. I'm like thinking like, oh, okay, he could have did better, but you know, then again, it is the first one. So first thing that I was kind of like, oh man, maybe he could have did better, a little better is, the footage quality, all right? Now, the footage quality is good. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad, it's good, but it's still like GoPro-y. Does that make sense? It's like GoPro-y. It just, you, you know it's by, it's no, you know it's the GoPro. In my mind, nothing really changed from this to this when it comes to the footage. Maybe the colors are a little better, maybe it's a little bit more HDR. I don't, mm, I don't know, man. I mean, the lens, like, it looks the same. Literally looks like the same lens. If you like look at it, like the size, the sensor is probably the same size. Maybe not, I don't know, there's just two of these. So the footage kind of looks GoPro-y. Also the 5.6K. Now when you're thinking 5.6K, you're thinking like, man, that's huge. You know, it's more resolution than my computer screen. But that's the spherical video. So when you zoom into the point that you want, it becomes more around 1080 or even less sometimes, depending on how much you zoom in. Yeah, does that make sense? However, that's not the part I'm complaining about. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's honestly okay. What I'm thinking is, I think they could have made it 5.6 at 60 frames a second. I really think they could. This thing seems like it could do it. I think it's just artificial like holdback. Like it's artificially limited, I swear. Somebody jailbreak this thing, I swear. 
because right now the spherical video, if you do want to go to 60, you can go to 60 frames a second, but you need to jump down to 3K spherical video. So 3K spherical video, you can do at 60 frames a second in here. You can, you have the option to do that. I've done it in the test footage. However, when you do crop in and you zoom in, you know, it looks a little gray. It looks a little pale. It looks about 720 or less, 720p or less. So the quality drops off significantly. It literally looks like if I took this thing and I put it on that uh, 720p, 240 frames a second, mode that's similar to what it looks like in my mind i think they could have pushed 120 frames a second at 3k and 60 frames a second at that 5.7k spherical video that's what i'd like to see maybe in the max 2 or maybe in a software update or maybe some genius jailbreaks this thing that'd be sweet other than that like the footage looks good like it does look good i know it, i said it looks gopro -y, but like I was expecting that. Like, what are you expecting? I mean, like, look at the thing. It's like the small, how big can the sensor be? It's got, it can't be that big. Super cool. If you want to take a photo, easy, all right? You switch between the video and photo modes. Man, I'm, this is out of order. But if you, once you turn this thing on, um, and you're in the video mode, right? All you gotta do is click the power button without holding it and you can jump over to photo mode, right? And then if you click it again, you jump over to time lapse. I didn't use the time lapse. I don't care. I didn't have time for that, all right? Time lapse will probably look awesome, all right? But I didn't, all right? So I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, you can take that time-lapse, you can go camping in the desert, take the time-lapse of the stars, just like everybody else. So yeah, that's the first thing I don't really like. The second thing I don't really like, well, this, I don't know is if it's 100% GoPro's fault, but the compatibility of editing this footage in Premiere Pro. So the 360 spherical footage is special footage, okay? It's a special file that basically you can't just view on your computer, right? You need the proper software. GoPro has software for editing this, which is easy to download. You download it. And then when you open the 360 footage, it opens in the GoPro app and you have full control over it. Now, editing the 360 footage in the GoPro app isn't too bad. It's not too bad, to be honest, once you get a hang of it, it's actually all right. Zoom in, zoom out, pan, tilt, do whatever you want, and then you can add the key frames. So you can go from this angle to this angle, zoom out to that angle, right? I kind of sucked at editing, editing it, blah, blah, blah. It was a little weird to figure out how to use coming from like Premiere Pro, because you know, the key, keyboard shortcuts are different. However, this is the kicker, but this is where I also get a little disappointed. There is a plugin by GoPro for Premiere Pro, so you can edit this 360 footage in Premiere Pro if you have the plugin. The downsides, first of all, it requires you to export the spherical footage in the GoPro app. First of all, you have to export it as like a equal frame thing o whatever. I don't know, man. They tell you what to do. So it looks kind of like, it looks weird, right? So that way Premiere Pro can recognize it. So what I would do is I would just basically import all my footage and automatically export it all and then put it in Premiere Pro. So the second part that's annoying is I could not get this plugin to work in Premiere Pro. And it seems like a lot of people also could not get this plug into work in Premiere Pro 2020 version. Um, that's just what it seems like. It seems like Premiere Pro just it like doesn't want to recognize the plugin. I tried multiple times, I tried multiple things, could not get it to work. So I had to edit all of my footage in the GoPro app. And then once it was edit, edited, I exported it. Then I put it in Premiere Pro. And if I wanted to change something up, um, I had to go back to the GoPro app. If you have like an older version of Premiere Pro, it might work. But I, you know, that's stupid. It should work in the most recent version of Premiere Pro. That would have made things so much easier and smoother when it comes to editing and creativity rather from jumping from app to app, right? Just doing it all in Premiere Pro would have been so much better. But I'm certain they'll fix it. You know GoPro, they have great um, support when it comes to, you know, fixing software, right? I heard, I heard, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. So yeah, unfortunately, if you have Premiere Pro 2020, you might not be able to get it to work. Just the plugin won't work, but you can get the footage edited in the GoPro app and then move it over to the new Premiere Pro like I did. That's what I did. I also feel like they could have jumped up the, uh, you know, just the normal action cam mode. I feel like they could have jumped up that image quality. You can actually go to 1440, but it's in four by three. So if you do the action cam, you're like, oh, I can do 1440, but it's in four by three. The only good thing about that is like in post, like if you wanted to make a 1080p clip, you could basically, you have space on the top and the bottom where you can crop into, right? You have a little extra space. So, uh, whatever. 
I mean, unless you want to play a 14, your grandma has a 1440 4x3 TV. I swear, they could have made that action camera 4K. They could have did 4K on the action camera easily. You know, I, yeah, I know they could. Software update, I swear. But yeah, then again, it's the Max. They're probably coming out with the Max too soon. You know what I mean? The Max too soon is probably coming, it's probably coming out right, right around the corner, honestly. Great, all right, bought this. That's my review in a nutshell. That's what I thought of it. Super cool. I know I probably didn't cover everything, you know, like the webcam, uh, hooking it up to the webcam, all the settings, all the adjustments, all the features, but man, this is just straight out of the box. How does it work? You know what I mean? Minimal setup. So that's what you get in this video. Hopefully it was entertaining. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm gonna be using this thing more, fig figuring out more stuff about it. Maybe I'll let you know in vlogs and stuff. So stay tuned for that. More videos coming out. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching this. Peace, y'all have a good one. I will see you all in the next video.